Okay, hello everyone. This is Albert, ATK, and we're going to talk about bracelets. So you guys have been requesting me to talk about bracelets a little bit because you guys are getting it very, very soon. There was too much information about bracelets, so I kind of dumbed it down and we'll explain to you the basics uh, and then what you should be looking for uh, when you are uh, trying to prepare this new particular accessory that's going to come out. Now let's get started right away. So what's a bracelet? The item will you obtain from item level 1490. So you get it from 1490 plus Chaos Dungeons, a 1490 Guardian Raid, which is Kyle Eligos, and Bro Shazza Legion Raid and beyond. As in, you know, Bro Shazza Raid and Akan Raid in the future. And also Kangil. Kangil is after Bro Shazza, so we'll be getting those. These are also completely different from standard accessories. Separate vendor. I'll show it to you later. RNG rolls for combat stats to unique attributes. And great rolls can provide over 10% damage increase. Some can go even 15, but those things kind of don't exist. But it goes from either like 5 to 15 plus. So that's like an engraving. So spec classes, can DPS rotation can change too. Or lack of crit or swift can be fortified from bracelets too. We have an example. We have Moon Reapers with Wealth Rune. The number of Wealth Rune can decrease uh, based on the bracelets you get as well. Uh, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. And transformation classes, if your bracelets have additional spec, you get to have more. So for example, uh, you have to have 1771 spec for two drone transformation. And you need the help of bracelets to cover that up. Bracelet sucks. A bracelet isn't the greatest system either because it has terrible drop rate for good ones. And even if you have a terrible drop rate, you have to roll for it too. It costs payons to buy off of users as well. So it costs 25 payons for relics and 35 for ancient, which you guys don't have to worry about it so far. But let's just go for relics. We're only going to talk about relic bracelets today uh, because I wanted to make sure that doesn't cause confusion on the builds and stuff. Now, there are crazy amounts of RNG attributes as well. So there are four base stat, you know, HP, Dexterity, Int, and Strength. There's six combat stats, obviously the crit, uh, swift, spec, etc. And we have 39 attributes. And 39 attributes, uh, and 19 of them are on drop attributes. And 20 of them are only NPC RNG attributes. The difference, I will talk about it uh, step by step in a little bit as well when I show you guys the demo. So, bracelet in a nutshell, right? In my opinion, uh, you don't have to worry about bracelets for now, right? It's crazy rare. And then we'll mention in the future video how far should I push as well. Like, what items should you go for? What items should, like, you should sell? And, and long story short, I think you should just sell bracelets when you get them, uh, if you think it's good. Because people will buy it. The whales will definitely buy it, and they'll roll for it, and they'll keep buying and buying and buying. Because uh, that's the only way to break your ceiling in terms of DPS. So what does bracelet actually have? Now, before we show you this particular page, I am going to show you the bracelet NPC. So if, if you go to any town, so in Vern, just find this icon over here. It's like a bracelet icon with like a little bit of swirly thing on it. So let's say you do your Chaos Dungeons, you do your Guardian Raids, you do your Broshaza Raid. These are the bracelets that you can get. And if you look at them, some of them have three, some of them have two, and some of them have four. It's a great example. I only got five of them, right? Uh, and then, you know, there's two, and then there's all these different attributes. You kind of see it. It's in Korean, but... One thing for sure, just to you guys mention, is there are three lines, right? There are three lines, two lines, four lines, etc. Now look at this one though. These are all of the attributes that you can get by re-rolling it. For example, this is the base, this is strength, and this is HP. And these are combat stats. And these are the special attributes that you can get. You can get all of these, RNG. This is why the bracelet is crazy. You can get all of these. So that's why it's a little bit harder to understand what you get. So um, a long story short, you notice here, it says for a particular one, it will be bracketed. So RNG here, this is, you can only obtain this attribute by re-rolling it through the NPC. So from this point on, upon receiving the bracelet, all these are randomly chosen. All of this stuff above. And these are usually shit like like shit attributes. Because this, this one particular says uh, it's a doll. After you press your spacebar from getting up, 
your endurance is increased by 100 or 130 or 160. It's, bo it's stupid, right? It's a stupid thing. You get really angry if you get this. This one, however, this is a mana return. Uh, you have a chance to return your mana 125, 150, or 175, 20% chance if you use your skill. This is actually a really good attribute for supports. But you also have some of these uh, garbage ones. Like if you get hit, <laughs> if you get hit by a monster, seven percent chance you get uh, you get speed buff for eight seconds, and then you get one thousand weapon uh, damage. You increase two percent movement speed and two percent attack speeds. It's stupid. You have to get hit by the monster, and and you know some of the stuff I don't need to talk about it because our goal is to figure out the main stuff. So let's go back to this page right here. So we got four base stats. You got HP, Dex, two, max two line per category. So you can't get like the same thing, two per category. So you can't get crit, spec, and then swiftness. You can't get three of them. So not only that you need to get this attribute, you need to get the high grade for it. That's why there's R it's RNG on top of RNG on top of RNG on top of RNG. That's why this system is, is the biggest whale and the biggest uh, stressful thing. So you guys don't need to worry too much about it. This is why, the, and also hence, the video I said in the very beginning, you guys don't have to worry about too much about this because it's not a thing that is, you can brute force it. It's just given to you. And at 20 NPC unique attributes, let's say look at some of the examples, like rare unique attributes that you can get it by rolling. Hence by rolling, let me give you another example. Let's say I got this bracelet over here. This bracelet has domination 74 and HP 851. I pay 18k silver to roll two of these. So if I press it, press the button, it rolls it, and it gives me two random attributes. And this is strength. And then this one is, is, is uh, you don't have to worry about it. It's just long stuff, right? And then you can roll it again or keep it for 30k silver. For example, oh, the strength, eh, I think it's not that good. This is garbage. You just roll it again. And you get it again, so I got strength, less strength this time, and this is endurance, 72, right? And now you have to pay 48K to roll it again. Now we got crit, and then we have 175 strength, and then 60 a crit. So imagine you want this crit, you wanna keep this crit. You can lock it here. So you can only roll one of these lines for 72 silver, uh, 72 K silver. So you spend more, more as you go. So this costs a lot of silver. Not only just gold, payons, costs a lot of silver to get the thing that you want. So if I roll it one more time, I'm keeping that crit, right? I'm keeping this crit and I got strength again. Now, you know what the scary part is? I rolled it four times. I never got any of these. It is that rare. Let's talk about some of these unique attributes though. So there's things like decreased defense by 1.5, 1.8, 2.1, those kind of stuff, right? Decreased crit resist by 1.5, 1.1, 1 2.1. .1. These are like raid related stuff. And there's also flat increased damage uh, attributes like up to 2.5. And there's also increased crit rate up to 4%. And there are special attribute stuff. For example, it says if you're under 80% HP, your damage is decreased by 3.5. Or if you're over 40% HP, you are increasing your damage by 3.5. So for example, what if you got this bracelet for Mayhem Zerker? Your HP is under 20%, right? So this would be on all the time. Let's talk about bracelets a little more before we go to like a tier list of what we can get. Whenever you get this bracelet, you can obviously can sell it off the auction house. If you dismantle it, let's say you roll it, you got shit. You dismantle it. You get these pieces. You get these pieces called the, the bracelet pieces. And what you can do with the bracelet pieces is you can either buy more bracelets, 35 each, or later on in the future, you can upgrade your bracelet. So let me roll this bracelet again real quick. So I got spec 62, so check this out. So if I have, if I have 100 of these, Parts, you know, the ancient parts, the bracelet parts. I can upgrade my bracelet. So look at that, it's plus 20. So it's from 62 to 82, 43 to 63, and special attributes are shifted towards the right, as in shifted towards the better one. So if you happen to have a real good relic one, maybe it's a good idea if you just save these bracelet pieces to upgrade them after you do it for relics. Now I will talk about the tier list of assets that you can get and talk about it a little bit. So the translation might be a little bit different, okay? But since the attributes are about the same, just keep this in mind. 
there is a attribute called cycle. So what this does is every 10 seconds, you will rotate these three buffs. You get up to 3.5% damage, 6% crit rate, and 10% crit damage. So for 10 seconds, you'll have 3.5% damage. And when that 10 seconds complete, the next 10 seconds is going to be 6% crit rate. And then next 10 seconds is going to be crit damage. And after that 10 seconds is over, you're going back to 3.5% damage. This is the OP line that you can get. So if you get this, you have to keep it. Like as an obvious, you would keep it. But the text is very long. So people happen to skip it. So you have to watch out. If you get something like this, you always have to keep it. Because this itself is at least 4 to 6% damage increase for you. Another tier 0. If highest grade, right? Or even middle too. So we have Dirk and we have Weakness Exposure. So what this is, is it decreased defense by 1.5, 1 1.8, 2.1%. 1 .1%. But this is raid-wide. As in, it's a debuff to the boss. So it's a complete raid-wide buff. So supports usually have this. And both of these supports usually have it. For example, the weakness exposure decreased crit resistance by 1.5, 1 1.8, 1 2.8, 2.1. Uh, so if supports have it and, you know, attack the boss, he will have a 2.1% decrease in crit resistance. So everyone in the team will have a higher crit percentage of 2.1%. However, only one person is going to wear this because it's only one attribute, right? Because uh, there's a, there has been a qu uh, question, like people have been asking questions, even in the Korean server, saying like, oh, so what if two people have weakness exposure? What does that happen? Then what's going to happen is it's going to keep the highest grade. So for example, if your friend is wearing a, a bracelet with weakness exposure of 2.1, that's going to be the debuff that is going to be applied on the boss. If you have 1.8 weakness exposure on the same team, this is just completely negated. It's just deleted. So these are the tier zero, like single line stuff, if highest grade for this one. So support one, if you guys get this, you'll be very happy. You know, this is a really, really good support bracelet. Now, the tier zero double line requirement. So this is a little bit harder. It's almost impossible for you to get because relic bracelets are only four lines. When you're in five lines, it's a little bit easier to get. So what this is, is it's called composure and passion. So what this is, is if you're under what composure does, if your HP is under 80%, you increase your damage by 3.5. Passion is if over 40%, your HP uh, your your damage is increased by 3.5%. So what this does is if you have both of these, it's 7 point percent damage increase if you use an Adrofin, because Adrofin takes away 25% of your HP. For next one, Wedge and Hammer. So Wedge is increased damage 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.45 per stack four max every two seconds right and at four stacks the turn buff into iron wedge for eight seconds which is double the effect this particular wedge attribute is very bad it's actually at tier four i'll explain it more later okay however if wedge and hammer attribute is added together what happens is it increases crit damage six eight to ten percent the hammer stat alone if Wedge exists as Iron Wedge, it gives you an additional 8% crit damage. 18% plus whatever the damage increase that you can have. These things together at least increases a couple of classes by 8% damage overall. It's one of the best ones. One of the best ones. So imagine a five-line dream one would be, imagine you get like a Psycho and a Wedge and Hammer with two combat stats. Uh, no one has that, by the way. So we have the tier one single line two. So you've seen Passion, right? So Passion itself... And the hammer itself is a tier one attribute already. Because if you're over 40% HP, which most of you are guys, most of you guys are going to be over 40% HP anyway. So this is basically a free 3.5% damage increase. And as for hammer, this increases crit damage. This is actually really good for entropy classes or classes don't even that uh, that doesn't even take keen blunt and not going entropy because that's just an increase in crit damage. It's efficient the lower your crit damage is but it's not as efficient if you're high crit damage, as in like you have Keen Blunt and you go Entropy. Either way, since the percentage itself is so high, it is at tier one. Now at tier two, we have something called Ambush. It gets back attack damage. And then we have something called Combat, which is head attack damage up to 3.5%. And we also have Precise. Precise is increases crit rate flat, two, three, four percent And Superiority is additional damage straight up. 
tier 3. Now we have something called surprise attack. This back attack, crit damage, is 468%. This is tier 3 is because, look at this, it's 468%, but hammer is 6810. This is just the worst version of hammer. So you can kind of filter out why certain things are higher tier, because, you know, they just give less, uh, less crit. And for tier 4, we're back to wedge. So what wedge does is it just increases damage to 4.45% per stack, and it's two max every two seconds. So you need to get the four stack to get the iron wedge buff for eight seconds. So this particular rotation is every 14 seconds, and it goes in a, like a roller coaster. So now we also have something like increased wounds, right? Increased crit damage by 100% by two, three, four percent chance. And it does not affect awakenings. Best in slot bracelet is not something you can invest into, right? They're given to you like 9-7 stones or even like 10-10 stones. So honestly, I will not buy bracelets for now because all that money can be used somewhere else. You can either, you know, hone. You can either get better accessories for engravings. You can also get gems. I think, I think gems would be the biggest recommendation that I would have. These things are players who are at absolute cap. As in, they have 100 quality weapons. You have nowhere else to grow. Uh, and bracelet is one of them. So maybe you can just invest into bracelets for, uh, for players who have nothing else to <laughs> spend on. Okay, so it's a super whale accessory to me. But it can also be naturally farmed and naturally changed as you keep progressing through the game. And it gives you another, it gives you more gold income because if you get a rare bracelet drop, you get to sell it to those whales. So this will also be mentioned that how far should I push video because I'm working on that to help you guys to where to park and how far you should push and uh, based on the income that the potential new content is coming out, right? So until bro gate five and six, uh, you have to focus on selling good ones and slowly obtain them and switch them. Because bro, gate 5, 6 normal gives you a lot of bracelets. I think it gives you like 14 or something like that every week. But not many people can clear 5, 6 on the first week, right? So the bracelet itself is going to be very, very rare in the very beginning. So you guys should just keep on selling that uh, if you happen to pick them up. Even if it's shit quality too. Because no one's going to have them, right? No one's going to have bracelets for a long time. That's what happened. I didn't even, I didn't even wear a bracelet until uh, gate 3, 4. Because um, one, it was too expensive. Two, I never got one. And the first one I got was from a Chaos Dungeon that just gave me 60 crit. That's it. But 60 crit, it's better than nothing. Okay? So with that being said, this c concludes the video.